What's up, MI40 University? BPAC, Dr. Jacob Wilson. We've got a super cool topic for you today. One close to my heart, wind gates and high-intensity cardio. <laughs> you, know, um, uh, you all know how much I love that. Uh, nobody really loves it, but we love the result, right? So we got the man himself, Dr. Wilson, to talk about uh, maybe some protocols for you guys, one of the best um, ways to do cardio or high-intensity cardio, maybe what you shouldn't be doing for high-intensity cardio, as well as how maybe it compares to steady state, and if you should have been including, including steady state as well. Mm -hmm. So him and I are going to discuss that. So, Doc, uh, first of all, you've done tons of research on wing gates. Um, do you have a specific protocol that you like? First of all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the assumption that you prefer high-intensity cardio over steady state for overall fat loss. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Why? All right, yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about well, that. the biggest thing that we're, we're all concerned with is like being able to have mass, but also being able to be shredded at the same time. And it's the easiest way to talk about it is like looking at a sprinter. Sprinters are shredded, but they got a lot of good muscularity, and they never do long-duration cardio. Right. Not saying long-duration cardio does not have a place. It may have a place, but high-intensity cardio seems to be... Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> there you go, right? So, um, you know, I personally myself don't do like low intensity cardio, um, but the bottom line is that it is superior for fat loss. Our labs found that. In fact, if you, here's an interesting thing. You look at like the, the books or like personal training books, and they go, you got to get in the fat burning zone. zone. Right? The fat burning zone, it's right? Zone. <laughs> exactly. And what is this like? What, 60% of your heart rate max, something right. like that? And you get tested on this stuff, right? If you would put 85%, you would get the answer wrong, okay? Well, te technically, it's right, right? Yeah, as far yeah. as what's going to oxidize the most fat during exercise. Yes, right? exactly. Exactly right. And, and we, Ben and I both know this. You look at the physiology, those studies that were done by Romjin in like the 90s, they were looking at during. But we want to know what happens long term. Right. So what's the best way to set your body up for burning the most amount of fat now? So I know what you and I discuss is the idea of you know high intensity and now maybe the idea of high intensity followed up by some steady state. Mm -hmm. So can we go through the mechanism there, how that's happening? Uh, I know we briefly discussed lipolysis mm -hmm. and oxidation previously in videos in the my Ford University, but let's go into that in a little detail. Yeah, so absolutely. What, what's absolutely. our best opportunity to maximize fat loss? Like if, if I got three weeks and I got seven pounds, eight pounds to lose, what do I got to do? Well, I think the bottom line is if, if there's three weeks left, you know, we know the calorie um, perspective is important. Starve yourself into two hours. <laughs> exactly, <day>. yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so but basically the main point is that we know that one advantage to doing the high intensity cardio, you release a bunch of adrenaline. Yep. That increases lipolysis. And so you have a bunch of fatty acids just all around right now. And that actually triggers more adrenaline to be released. I'll tell you what, if you're doing Wingate's properly, <clears throat> Before you even walk into the gym or the lab to do the wind gates, your adrenaline swung because you're scared. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't really don't want to do this. Yeah. So you get the adrenaline flow. Is that yeah, Ben so. like texts me and says, "Hey, can I come over to do the wind gates?" I announce it, and there's adrenaline flowing like around the whole <laughs> lab, right? <laughs> <laughs> Is he gonna make me do it? <laughs> exactly. So basically, so now you got adrenaline flowing. The concept you have three weeks left. You're doing lower intensity cardio. Is it drives those fatty acids toward muscle, and it be it's oxidized. Right. So the combination seems to be at least a good combination for increasing fat oxidation. Awesome. So as far as protocols, um, I'll talk quickly about what I like to do. And, and uh, there's a lot of different things. There's, there's no one protocol that works the best. Um, you know, I've obviously made suggestions in the past as to, hey, follow this protocol because I know it worked really well for me. Um, the best way to do it, absolutely, is to vary your stimulus. You can't do the same thing over and over again. So when I go into Doc's lab, I'm always like, Doc, what are we doing today? So they always usually track what we did last time. They'll write it on the board or they'll what kind of a protocol written on the board. Um, so if last time I did, you know, 10 by 10 win second wind gates, this time I might do, you know, 6 by 20, and then I might do 3 by 30. Or, and it's always varying the amount of time and the, and the type of sti stimulus, and even resisted, or changing the type of resistance and the load. So on a wind gate bike, the benefit of it is you can actually change the amount of weight resistance on it. So one time I might come in and say, I just, you know, I have to train legs tomorrow or something. I didn't want to do a tremendously fatiguing um, wind gate. I want to do something that's maybe a little more stimulating but not a ton of volume. So I may do something that's heavier for 10 seconds. Whereas if I'm trying to really deplete everything, I might go lighter for 30 seconds. And um, you know, always learning how to strategically vary those things. And the same thing if you're pushing a prowler, same thing if, if you're doing any type of you know, wind sprints on outside or up a hill, whatever it happens to be. Always vary the distance, always var vary the, res the resistance. Uh, any, different, different, uh, any different loading parameters that you can vary is what you want to change, right? Even, even sometimes, um, you know, pushing the prowler versus pulling the prowler, like big difference. You know, when you're pulling the prowler, you're looking at massive quad stimulus. When you're pushing the prowler, you're looking at massive glute and hamstring stimulus. So 
varying it that way, even going back and forth, knowing that, hey, I'm going to really blow up my hamstrings if I do them, if I do six prowlers in a row, uh, pushing, so I'll well, push one, pull one, push one, pull one. And same thing with the, with the Wingate for me is one set I may focus on pushing with my quads, one set I may pull, focus on pulling with my hamstrings, and it's just a different stimulus, right? It's 100%. I mean, yeah. that's the best way to do it is constantly varying things up. Yeah, and strategically make sure you're doing <coughs> more than the last time. If, you, if your goal is um, ultimately burning fat, if you're burning fat, then don't change anything. If you're not burning fat, then you make sure you're slightly pro progressing each time. So it's important to record what you're doing. Yeah, 100%. And let's talk about like the wing gate. Say you don't have a wing gate or you've seen Ben wing gate. And you're like, well, how do I how do I do them right if I don't have one? Just email Dr. Wilson and come to the lab. There, and that's that's all you got to do. <laughs> uh, no, tell him I'm kidding. <laughs> all right. So one thing you can do is if you have like a spin bike. The thing is, like spin bikes, you can kind of crank up the resistance almost immediately. The point of a wing gate when we have people in the lab is they go all the way out. They hit 175 revolutions with no weight on the flywheel, and then immediately you have resistance. A resistance so high that you wouldn't be able to pedal more than like five miles an hour. Uh, um, or five revolutions per minute um, on that bike, right? So basically now you have high velocity, high speed, high force at the same time, and that's what kills you. So you spin all the way out on the bike for maybe about two to three seconds, you have your partner crank it up, or if you don't have a partner, you crank it up immediately, and you pedal all out for 10 to 30 seconds for four to 10 repetitions, like Ben said, varying the weight, varying the uh, number of repetitions, and varying the duration that you actually perform. Yeah, and it's important to realize your body will recover really quickly from that. So even though you may feel like you want to die for three to five minutes after, you could probably get back on and do it again pretty quickly, especially if it's a lower duration, 10, 15 second type wing gate. Uh, when it comes to prowlers, um, same idea. So sometimes I'll push four lengths of the gym, sometimes I'll push one, sometimes I'll push 10 without stopping, uh, depending on how much I've eaten that day, depending on what I'm training that day. Uh, so many different factors. So Doc, let's talk about nutrition around high intensity cardio. Um, you know, there's been some debate that suggested um, having carbohydrates before high intensity cardio will, in, will induce greater thermogenesis. And there's also, I think, which is what your school of thought is, having no carbohydrates <coughs> before will great, induce greater fat loss. So where's the balance? Good question. I think that, like, if someone's in the off season and they're trying to just move their nutrients toward muscle, I think it's fine to have carbs before. Mm -hmm. You know, I think sometimes they get trained without carbs because it's important for mitochondria, like insulin sensitivity. Mm -hmm. But if the guy's got three weeks left, they want to maximize, maximize fat metabolism. Fat loss, right. In that case, I train in a lower carbohydrate state. So here's an important thing that you mentioned, is if you're in the off season, should you not be doing cardio? Most people say, oh, I'm doing cardio in the off season because it's going to burn muscle. I wouldn't suggest doing steady state cardio in the off season or low intensity, but high intensity is only going to increase one, your aerobic capacity, your anaerobic capacity, your body's ability to use nutrients. So just makes sense. Uh, yes, it sucks. No, you probably don't want to do it every day, but doing it you know, a few times a week, two to three times a week, to keep your aerobic capacity, your anaerobic capacity high, it's a really good tool. So most guys in the gym, especially people that I pay attention to, they go and train legs, they go and train back, and they're gassed. They can't, they can't do a superset or a drop set for life dependent on them. So their amount of life dependent on them, so their, their amount of time under tension is minimal. So what's their limiting factor? It's not their muscles anymore. It's their ability to, to breathe, mm -hmm. to, to maintain aerobic or anaerobic capacity. So my suggestion is if that's your limiting factor, get your butt on, on something and do some high intensity cardio. So that, you know, that's the way I approach all my training, right? Is what's 100%. my limiting factor? Um, whatever the limiting factor is, make your strength. So if you find that you're really, really gassed, training legs, training back, larger body parts, you gotta do cardio because you never want that to be your limiting factor. I know for me, there was a point in, in my career, my lower back used to get so pumped from doing legs. Well, now I know it's because my form sucked, but it's also because, you know, my, my lower back was weak. So I made my lower back my strength. I'd go and deadlift two or three times a week, or I'd do my back extensions, whatever it was. And just address it like that. Wherever you break down, if it's not in the right spot, if your legs aren't the part breaking down first, you're not gonna be building them. You're not gonna have maximum output. Exactly. Anything else to add about steady state cardio? Where's, where's the place and how much should they be doing, if at all? Good question. The, the thing that we find is that, basically the reason why cardio makes you lose muscle is because the adaptations are so different than right. weightlifting. Talk about that, that's cool. Yeah, absolutely. So basically, like, here's the thing to understand. If you look at a marathon runner, obviously their adaptations are completely different. In fact, it is advantageous to lose muscle and have a small amount of muscle if you're an endurance athlete because you don't want to provide, you have a lot more tissue, more oxygen you got to provide, right? So that's the adaptation and that's right in the sweet spot to anywhere from 60% of your heart rate max to 85% of your heart rate max. If you're going all out at that point, you're making endurance adaptations and you're countering the adaptations you would make mm -hmm. with bodybuilding. 
If you go very high intensity, now it's like sprinting, it's similar to lifting. If you go very low intensity, like walking, for example, that's not going to cause adaptations and right. therefore not counter adaptations. Right. So Doc actually mentioned something really interesting to me probably two or three years ago. It's the simple idea that when you're training for endurance, your body de develops a really, really efficient neurological stimulus that's almost like a cyclical pattern that um, basically detrains the nervous system. So when you're training with muscle, your, mus your, your nervous system is trying to train as many muscle fibers as possible. When you're training a heavy, train to build muscle. When you're training something um, low intensity, like a, like walking or jogging or something like that, your body's just trying to be able to do it forever, theoretically, right? So your nervous system becomes almost detrained and uses as few muscle fibers as possible. And, and like I said, cyclically kind of preferences where the fibers are going so they don't really fatigue one area. So really important to realize that like, that's why low intensity cardio isn't your best yep. friend all the time. Yep. Um, so if you're doing it all the time, your body's going to become detrained and you will probably end up getting weaker. So uh, that's a long video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Got some good info. Dr. Wilson's always the man. BPAC, MI4 University out.